What's going on? So today I want to talk about, so today I want to discuss how I got from a 501 MCAT to a 509. Um, I originally took it back in June, let's say, June 2015, and then uh, the most recent score, I took it in June 2016. I guess I don't want to make any excuses, but when I originally took it, I was sick that day, so I think that definitely played a role in my score because I was scoring um, pretty well on my practice exams um, up until that date. Um, but like I said, I was sick that day, and um, I guess things just did not work out well. Um, so realizing that I had to take it again, I definitely studied in a different way, and that's what I want to talk about in this video. So about like four to five months before the exam, that's when I started studying seriously. Um, I was pretty much on like an eight to 10 hour a day study schedule. Um, first, I wanna give you my score breakdown though. So I ended up with a 129 on uh, the chemistry and physics aspect. I don't know what they, they call it now, but the chemistry and physics, um, a 126 on verbal, a 128 on the bio and biochem, and then a 126 on psych and soc. So you definitely can see the discrepancies between, you know, my science scores versus my not science scores. Um, verbal was something I always struggled with and I'm just glad I got above a 125 on it to be honest with you. I think I got like a 62 percentile on the verbal, which for me I'm happy with, so I'm glad I just got that over with. So yeah, different ways that I studied. So number, so I'm going to break down pretty much three ways. Um, the first thing I did was uh, I changed my method of note taking. I stopped just copying verbatim facts down from whatever book I was studying from, let's say exam crackers. I, st I started interpreting the facts and putting it in my own words and trying to relate it to the bigger picture. Um, so that's something that I definitely, so that's something that differed from how I first started studying for the MCAT to when I studied, started, for when I started studying again for the MCAT. So just interpreting um, the facts more and trying to relate it to the bigger picture, um, whatever that was. Um, so number two, so number two um, was not like a, sort of a method, but just how I structured my days. I definitely was more focused and more structured on my second attempt for taking the MCAT rather than the first time. Like I said, I studied about eight to ten days consistently with very few breaks, like one or two days I would say I took a break from it just so I could get out of that world and you know just take a step back and relax but I was definitely more structured and I think that's something that's super important for you to do and something that helped me out as well. So the third thing I did was I took way way more practice exams and practice passages. Um, I got the Princeton Review Science Workbook off of eBay and that has like, I don't know the exact amount, but it was either like hundreds or like close to a thousand passages that I just ran through. I didn't get through them all. And that's something that I wish I did because I thought I was saving them up for like later. So it ended up being that I didn't even get through it all. So that's something I wish I would have done earlier on um, was just practice those passages. And then about three, four or three to four weeks before the exam, maybe even two to three weeks before the exam, I started to take practice passages. No, I started to take practice exams um, and I stimul simulated the test day um, pretty much to the T. I would wake up at whatever time, uh, let's say 6 a.m., and I would start the exam at 8 a.m. So whether I was taking it in my room or in my library, I knew for the next eight hours, six to eight hours, I was going to be taking an exam. And I did that for, like I said, two to three weeks. I don't remember, two to four weeks, two to three weeks, one of those. We'll just call it three weeks. So I took it for three weeks and every other day I would take a full length exam, whether it's from Next Step, um, Exam Crackers, uh, I think I took a couple of Princeton reviews um, and a Kaplan exam. So I think those were the main ones I took, but I would take a simulated exam every other day. I would take the exam uh, one day, kind of get, take it, get my score, and then for the remaining couple of hours I had left in my day, I would review it. And then the next day I would finish reviewing the entire exam and then um, look at areas I was weak in and study those areas on that day. And then the next day I would take another full length exam. This was totally exhausting, very hard to do. I didn't get to do it every other day. Sometimes I had to skip a day because it was just mentally and physically exhausting. But I would say after like the seventh exam, I definitely started to notice patterns um, for like all the exams 
and the style of questions. I know that they're not all AMC style questions, but they definitely translated from the practice books to the AMC material. Um, just the trends you start to notice. I couldn't even just start to describe the trends. It's kind of like, um, you notice it unconsciously, I would say. <laughs> or you would notice it consciously, but you just, you just don't know how to describe it. So you definitely start to see trends after you start taking. Um, it's either that or you're like hallucinating. So you start to see, you start to definitely notice trends. Um, once you take a lot of a lot of practice exams. Um, I would say also I saved the AMC practice material um, for about one one and a half months prior to the exam and then that's when I started using the AMC practice materials such as the flashcards, such as the, um, the full-length exams, the question banks. Those were super super helpful to me and also focusing on areas that I was weak in. So that's what I did differently and that's how I kind of went from uh, 501 to a 509. I know it's not, you know, a crazy score, um, but definitely verbal, I think, and psych and social were my two main drawbacks. If I have any, if I could go back, I would definitely um, practice my verbal more and I would um, brush it up on the psych and social. So I took away time from studying from psych and social and I put that into the other areas, which is why I ended up scoring much better on, you know, on the first and third uh, section versus psych and social because I started to neglect it. And that's something I definitely wish I would have, if I could go back, I would change it so that I could make it more even, um, but it is what it is. Um, and with verbal, I think I had like a, I had like a little freak out on the exam. I completely, for two of the passages, I had no clue what was going on. And so what I did was I just ended up guessing on it, and I do not recommend that. Um, but I sort ended up guessing on the passages, and I just moved on to the next passage because I knew I was burning time, and I was not going to have enough time uh, to finish if I would have tried to reread those passages. So that's something that I think contributed to my 126 score as well. Um, but you know it is what it is, and. Um, it ended up being okay. So those, so those three things I think are the main things that contributed to my increase in score and also not being sick. So it was changing how I took notes, um, trying to interpret and relate it more to the bigger picture, the bigger idea, um, structuring my days more, and then practicing um, simulating the exam um, how, however many times I did. I think I did like 12 exams in the end um, from practice companies. And my favorite one was Next Step. Um, I would I scored like from 501 to 505 on the exams, and then on the uh, full length on the AMC full length scored I scored a five. I think I scored a 508 or 507. Um, and then on the actual exam, like I said, I scored a 509. So don't get too boggled down if you're taking like the next step exams, and you're seeing that you're scoring like, oh, 502, 503, 504. Um, I think those are harder than the actual exam. And I think that you are probably projected to get about, I would say maybe on average, five, I think five points um, better than what you're scoring on the next step on the, for on the real exam. So that's my story of how I tried to study more and more effectively for the MCAT and ended up increasing my score by eight points and ended up going up 30 percentile rankings. Um, I went from a 50 first, 50, 51 percentile ranking to an 82 percentile ranking. So I went up 31 percentile rankings. So if you have any questions or other questions about materials I used or um, my specific schedule, leave a comment below and I'll sure to get back to you. And also, if you like our videos, please subscribe, um, leave a thumbs up, and I will see you next time.